James, what's up? Brandon Dempsey here. Great to see you today. Welcome back on this fantastic Tuesday to help start the rest of your week right. We hope that things are going great. Welcome, everybody. So glad that you're here with us. WorshipTeenTraining.com and Worshipteen Training University. What is up? All of our Facebook friends and also our fantastic Periscope friends coming on right now. Thanks so much for joining us, man. We have a lot to cover today, and we are so glad that you guys are here. What is up? If you guys would, please go ahead and swipe and invite let everybody know what is going on right here as you're watching on Periscope and also Facebook Live. Invite your friends and your followers. Thanks so much for joining us. All of our fantastic people listening to the audio playback right now on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spreaker. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And we are so happy to be back with you. It seems so long. You know, it's only like a week. But we do these broadcasts every week on a Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central. And who are these broadcasts for? Well, they are for worship leaders, pastors, musicians, singers, audio tech, and you. There's a lot of people who are not on a worship team, and they watch these broadcasts, and they listen to the playbacks. Thanks so much for that. We today are talking about your worship leading foundation, your development. Hi, my name is Brandon Dempsey, and I'm a follower of Jesus and CEO of worshipteentraining.com, in which you can find our workshops that come to you a Friday, Saturday, me, your worship team, musicians, singers, worship leaders to go through a time of understanding worship leading from a biblical standpoint and hands-on skill practical training for your team. Also, we have mentoring that's right for you as a worship leader to walk with you in a 10-week program. You can find all of that and more at worshipteentraining.com and also remember to check out wttu.co. That is our on-demand membership online platform for you. We have over 700 pieces of articles and videos right at your fingertips, premium content, early access for you as you join, and you want to go ahead and join soon because things are going to change in the next four weeks. I'll give you more updates and news on that soon. So also, I forgot, I want to also thank and uh, welcome our brand new members to WTTU and also you that are watching for the first time. If this is your first time, if you would please in the comment window below in uh, Periscope or Facebook Live, type in the city and country, of course your name, and where you're from. That will help us greatly. So we thank you so much for joining us today. And as always, if you would submit your questions in the comment box window below as we talk about our worship leadership and what does it mean to be a leader? What does it mean to be developed? So let's go, shall we? Awesome. Let's get right to it. As we look in this week, we are talking about what a true worshiper is. If you guys have been following us in our, um, our, our university members, we did this yesterday, our worship morning, uh, Monday morning Bible study. We do live at 8 a.m. and it's for members only. We were talking about the, um, the whole idea of there's parts of surrender, there's parts of uh, giving all things to God. Uh, mainly, what we, what we really want to focus in on is how do we present our, ourselves to God in such a way that allows Him to do the leading through us. See, as worship leaders, most of the time, we think that it's all about us. We think it's all up to us. We think that you know worship can't start unless if we have a microphone or a guitar or whatever. And from the biblical standpoint, that's just not necessarily true. In fact, I don't see that anywhere. If you look at Scripture in the real sense, in the beginning, God begins our whole journey of God's Word. And in the beginning, God, it begins with God. Worship is for God. Worship begins with God. And so it doesn't begin with our guitar, our drum, our voice. As much as we may be skilled at it, that's great, but... You know, just like what Paul said, if we don't have the love in our hearts, then we're just a clanging cymbal. So what do you want to be? A clanging cymbal or one that has worship begun in you by God himself? So, yeah, I'm going deep pretty fast and pretty early. Sorry, but that's just how we roll here at the show. So we are here to talk about these things. Yesterday, we talked about are you good enough? You know, the whole idea of the way that God has wired you, formed you, called you into existence and sometimes yet when we leave Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon or whenever your worship service is, we feel like, man, we should just, maybe we're not as good. Maybe we should just hang it up. Maybe this is not true of where we need to be. Is that you? Is that the way you feel? 
Uh, I, I hope it isn't because I'm really praying that this show will encourage you and to turn those thoughts and to turn your heart around because that is not where God's called you to be. So um, let's jump into it. You want, you want to check this out first before we begin. Tomorrow we have our webinar with Kent Morris. That is going to be explosive. Kent is going to be, I just talked with him a few moments ago, uh, Kent is going to be doing a webinar for us on audio mixing. So behind the board, if you are a worship leader that you want to understand more about mix or you want your um, audio engineer to take a look at it and to gain some more insightful tools about mixing, Kent Morris is the guy who's done sound for Chris Tomlin, uh, Tommy Walker, David Crowder. Uh, he's the right-hand man right now of uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, has been his right-hand man, head sound broadcast engineer. He's going to be with us tomorrow behind the board to show us exactly what to do, so you don't want to miss that. You can go to wttu.co slash events and sign up today. It's also on tomorrow's date, which is February the 7th, 2018. Also, don't miss this coming Thursday. Gary Durbin is going to be with us. Gary is a worship leader. He's going to be spreading some of his knowledge about more than being a worship leader. I can't wait. It's going to be great. We have more guests coming up next week as well, so you want to be sure to go back to the events page on WTTU.co. Anyway, as we talk about our formation as worship leaders, what does that mean to you? Let me just ask you, what does it mean to be a worship leader? If you guys would, go ahead and just comment into the box and let us know. And you never know, you never know the comments that, and questions that you have, they may be resonating with somebody else. So uh, be mindful of that. And we ask for your participation. I'm going to roll on. As I see your comments and questions come in, I will answer them as we go here. So in being a worship leader, you know, is it, is it really about you just picking songs or is there something more? See, a lot of the times I know I get trapped up into the planning of things also during the week. And I think to myself, yeah, but, you know, if we just have this song here, if we start it this way there, it will get people to worship. You know, and that's so funny to me, isn't it? Isn't that, it's kind of comical to think that if, if we do this, they will worship, you know, <laughs> thinking and saying like if it's that easy. So let's backstep a little bit because if we really think it's about us and planning, of course, we've already said at the top of this uh, broadcast that all things begin with God anyway. But if all things be begin with God, then he comes first before the music. Well, wouldn't that be the same about our leadership, our heart to God, our relationship with our Father? That comes first before music. And if that's so, then what is it that we need to look on? Uh, Dan Danielle says this, thanks Danielle, on um, Periscope. Lay down life and find Christ, a heart of sacrifice, love, for he is Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. Well said, Danielle. Thank you, my friend, on Periscope. Uh, what else, you guys, your thoughts? I know that once we put God into planning center, things seem to change, right? When you plan your services, are you praying through them when you're planning songs? Are you, you know, backstepping even more? Uh, what about before you open up planning center, before you open up your Bible, before you look at a song set? Where are your prayers? Is it just about that? Lord, I, I pray that you can help me lead worship better. I mean, even though that's a great prayer to, pl uh, to pray, but what about your own heart? What about my heart? Before the words hit that microphone or the guitar strums or a piano or whatever, you may lead worship behind a set of drums. I don't know. But what happens in the heart when you wake up every day? Because see, if we are not really taking care of our souls and if we're not allowing God's word to nurture our hearts ultimately where does it end it may not end where we think our direction is going to be aimed at and so I want to know from you like what is worship to you what is leading worship to you Gord thanks he says this on Facebook live as worshipers we have an audience of one my calling as a worship leader has directed me to help to provide an atmosphere where we all, congregation and music leaders, can worship and praise our God freely. Amen, Gord. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, it's, it's all about He is the audience. 
You know, have you ever stepped into the sanctuary, worship center, whatever you call it, before you lead worship, and look at the environment and room that you're in and to see it larger beyond those four walls? I and mean, when was the last time that maybe you walked out into nature and had you ever gone to Niagara Falls or the Grand Canyon? Or it, it didn't have to be that spectacular. It could, it could just be stepping out into a park or a lake somewhere or even... No matter, but you, but you look up and you look at all around you to see God's creation and how beautiful it is. It just, for me, when I do that, it, it gives me perspective to understand that He is great, I'm small. He is strong, I'm weak. I, there's that exchange. And I believe um, by seeing ourselves in a um, temporary role, you know, it's it's humili it's it's humilifying. I was gonna say, but to see ourselves, I think that's it in a temporary role. This is our temporary role is this world. The fact that you lead worship is temporary. The fact that you do things on a daily basis is temporary because why? Our eternal home, as we are, as we believe in and told in Scripture, is not here. Our eternal home is with our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, the Holy Spirit. So. Where is our aim? Is our aim just to put on a good service? Or is our aim to be growing deeply? Because let me tell you why, friends. As you're leading worship, you're not just leading songs. You're leading souls. You are leading souls into God's presence. And what does that mean? That means that you and I have to take responsibility of what? our spiritual growth, our well-being, our nurturing into the Holy Spirit and being rooted into His Word. How can you grow fruit as a believer without the nourishment of God's Word? If God, and He has, planted His seed in you, as we're told in reading the parables, what is the condition of your heart? What is the condition of the soil of your spirit? Is it fertile? Is it rocky with resentment? Is it tangled with weeds of discontent or anger? Here's the deal. You will always be frustrated if you do not get these things right. You will always be frustrated. You will always walk away from every worship service saying to yourself, I'm not good enough, or this is not where I need to be, or I don't like this or that, or I can't stand it when people don't sing. You have to get past those things, worship leader. You have to forsake that because it's sin. It really is. When you start comparing yourself or saying, well, people won't sing if I don't do this or that, you know, you leave that to God. I mean, if you prepare spiritually and do all that you are to do as a leader, as a follower of Jesus, let God be the one to work on the people's hearts. Not you, not me, not us. That's not our job. If you look at the life of David through the Psalms, David had a righteous anger, but it was for the people to get right with God. For those who are turning against God, doing evil, well, you, you don't see people in your church turning from God in the worship service and committing evil. We don't need to be mad at them for that. It's more of a, how can you pray for your church to, for them to grow daily, not for, not for them to sing? Our, our job is, is not just that. It is, it is larger than that. So it's why and how is it larger? Because God has made you, worship leader, an example. You may think, and I've said this before many times, yeah, but I'm just a keyboardist, I'm just a guitar player. No, you're not just the, in quote, unquote. You are something more than that. Because God placed you there for a reason. If he's placed you there for a reason, it's because he's wanting you to model what it means to be humble, to be Christ's servant, to, to show love. And to see your church in love, even especially to those who don't sing and especially to those who do this and fold their arms and maybe glare at you. You know, it doesn't matter because here's the real deal. If people are so tied up in worship that they can't sing because of whatever that it is, then clearly their focus is not on the Lord anyway. And is that still your job to police it? No, it's not my job either. So be who you are in Jesus by examining yourself according to the scriptures. I'm bringing that back because it's like every time 
Yes, Gort says, my house will be a house of prayer. That's what the Lord Jesus says. Not a house of comparison. Not a house of preference. Not a house of, well, I must do this or this or that. So worship leader, let's talk about you. Let's talk about you in, in the sense of how is God growing your heart and your spirit each day? Because surrounding yourself by set lists throughout the week every day doesn't make you or I more holy or less holy, but I know that if we are to be skilled as what First Chronicles 25, 7 tells us, it says that all of them trained and skilled in the music for the Lord. Well, if we are to be trained and skilled in music for the Lord, for the Lord means that we are preparing it for the Lord. If we're being skilled to do something for the Lord, if it's for God, then how is our presentation for God? Is it by a rightful spirit? Is it by a whole heart? Is it by a clean heart? Is it by a transparent heart? Is it by a soul that when we see the Lord Jesus in reflection of his word, is he seeing us clearly? Or is God seeing us translucently because there's something else that's standing in the way? When you read about 1 Chronicles 25-7, you read that the musicians were committed to the Lord. They were committed to skill because they took it seriously. We take God's work seriously. God put that in you, worship leader and worship team, to take it seriously. And we have the, the overall joy and benefit, right, and blessing to lead worship. I mean, to make music and to have fun doing it and to rejoice in Christ. I mean, really, what better thing is there in life? I mean, you know, play sports. I mean, I love sports. I play it every day. I, I love being with our children, with my wife, all that stuff. That's great. But man, when you can do something joyfully for God, whether if it is, if your worship to him is throwing a basketball or if it's playing on the worship team or if it's being in the parking lot or if it's befriending those in the community, whatever that it is, that joy comes from a thankful heart. It comes from the formation of what God is already doing presently within your spirit. And it's just taking that responsibility. So let me hear from you. Where is it that you feel like God has called you to? So Terry says this question, should we encourage people to worship even though they have the opportunity to engage? Absolutely. Um, Terry, thanks for that question on Periscope. I think that it, it is our responsibility to encourage people not to berate people, okay? I mean, the worst thing that I've heard, probably you have too, is worship leaders that say, oh, come on, you can sing better than that. Oh, that just, that just crushes my soul when I hear that. But how about instead you say to the people, let us sing these songs as our prayers upon our lips. Let us give thanks to God for the great things that he's done. You know, um, how about, you know, we all do that, Terry, no problem. I mean, how about you say to the people, when you see those that are, you know, maybe struggling, uh, may, they got their arms folded or they're, you know, glaring, who knows? I mean, the fact is, you don't know the conditions of people's hearts before they enter the church. Think about it in a broader context. You could be in your church where, People are walking in that maybe they've left something at home that was not a joyful experience. Maybe on the way something occurred. Maybe there's, there's anger going on. There's other issues. There are more things going on than you, worship leader, to worry about than them, than them singing songs, right? So how do you encourage? How do you show love in, in those moments? Be sensitive to your people. Listen to what the people are singing and what they're saying. And when you see those in worship, if it's at a, like the upbeat first song, I just you know encourage everyone, hey, let's, let's, let's show our praise to God. And God's not asking us to be perfect, so with a, a joyful noise, let's just give Him thanks. I mean, it's just like that. It's just being who you are. There's no magic nugget or bullet to say, but I think it's just, it's you. I mean, that's just really it. It's, you know, if you feel like you're washed up, you're cracked, and maybe you're not going to make it, you're probably in the right place then. It's the opposite of what you think it is because most of us think, well, but I need to have this perfected and this down before I lead worship. No, because God already sees and loves you for who you are. And it's those imperfections that is filled by the love of Christ that makes you 
who he's already creating you to be. And for someone to see that in your church, to see, wow, I see David leading worship, and you know what? I know he's not perfect, but that encourages me. How often is it that you've had someone in your life that encouraged you when you saw their vulnerability? Well, my friends, that is exactly how God wants us to uh, show and, and to embrace in our lives when we're leading worship, when we're in uh, a conversation. You don't have to be perfect at all with all these things. But how can the love of God be perfected in you on a daily basis? I think that right there, that's the hardest part because that's what we have to wake up to every day and say, am I ready? <laughs> am I ready to deal with this? God, am, am I ready for you to come inside my heart and turn the tables over? When's the last time that you said that before leading worship? I know when I do, it takes the pressure off because then no longer, I'm not worried about me. I'm not worried about what I have to do to work up because you know what? If God is already present, he's already omniscient, he's already omnipotent, he is the beginning and the end, then what do I have really to worry about? Nothing. But I need to get my act together and make sure that I'm following him. Kenyon, thanks so much, brother. Uh, he says this, great stuff, you from San Diego, California. Right, San Diego, thanks so much, man. Um, you know, this is what it's about, friends. It's, it's about just, you know, it, it is developing our skill, our heart, our attitude. It's also about growing our craft. Um, when you look at the musicians uh, from 1 Chronicles 20, 25, they were skilled in what they do. Think of who else is skilled in contemporary times. I mean, I think about guys like Miles Davis, uh, Charlie Parker, Stevie Wonder. I mean, the Prince, you know, I mean, if you saw the Super Bowl, right, okay, this past weekend, Justin Timberlake, amazing. You know, and they did the tribute to Prince. And I mean, that right there, I mean, there's a reason why these guys are at the top of their game. It's, it's not because of money or, you know, any other kind of built-up thing. It's because their skill got them there. And, um, you know, everyone uses their own skill for their own glory. We pray that the glory goes to God and not to man. But if God's given you a talent and he's given you a skill and he's given you a calling, then why not max that out and use it all for him and not for yourself or somebody else? That is the question. And it's not about copying somebody. It's not about looking like somebody else. It's more about being yourself and who you are because nobody can take that away from you unless if you allow them, right? So, sorry, I don't mean to get on the box about it, but that's just close to my heart because I feel like as we lead worship, we are doing more than just leading songs. Like I said, we're leading souls. I say this a lot too. We're not just leading worship. We're leading relationships. How are you leading relationships around the room? Practice, 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 right? I mean, it, developing your skill. I have, you know, my guitars right here um, in our university program, WTTU.co. I go through keyboard stuff. Um, we're putting out new videos called The Daily Train, and um, we're getting more on the rack about going through keyboard stuff, guitar, vocal, worship leading. And, you know, it's, it is all about developing skill. It is all about helping your team, assisting them, empowering them for their, for their greatness that they can do in Christ. So remember that, even in your, worship, uh, your rehearsals, make sure that it's not taking time away from anyone else because you didn't practice. Make sure that you are developing skill on a daily basis, no matter what, because that is going to encourage your team I know that I have to up my game with my team. I mean, I have my weaknesses. When I step in, if I don't know something, I take, I make note of it. I'm like, okay. You know, my pianist made a joke at me this past Sunday. She said, hey, I liked your guitar solo a lot better uh, than what you did in uh, rehearsal. And it was like, and I wrote her back, thanks, period. <laughs> no, but I laughed. But, you know, it's true. Um, we should always be upping our game and, and take, criticism as a good thing. I mean, like, again, my pianist, she lovingly is joking at me, but she's right. I mean, I'm glad that I corrected my mistakes from rehearsal. I'm glad that I went through deep practice and worked out the notes and did what I had to do because, no, it's not about a presentation. It's not about what I can do on Sunday. 
but it's about giving my best for God. I mean, when was the last time when you had a birthday party and your loved one came out with a cake that was halfway baked? I mean, you would still love them, wouldn't you? But wouldn't it maybe the celebration wouldn't have been as great as maybe it could have been if the cake was like half baked and it was maybe damaged or dropped it on the floor and then they put it back on the plate and say, here you go, have a good one. You know, it's in a way, it's like worship can be like that. It's like, you know, we spend all this time during the week perfecting and prepping, right? But then we show up on Sunday, it's kind of like we just wing things. I mean, yes, the Lord Jesus still loves us and we're still accepted, but you know, how can God take our worship seriously if we're not taking the preparation seriously, if we're not taking Him seriously, if we're not growing in Him dedicatedly, seriously, every day? Like I said before, no, it's not about being perfect because that's exactly where God wants you to be. Otherwise, He wouldn't have died for the church. And we tend to think in this life, as Christians, well, I need to have this down and this down. And, you know, if we keep going on through A through Z, then why not we just bring back the Old Testament then and just live by the law if we can't live by grace? If you are living by grace, then you're going to grow in grace. You're going to grow through God's mercy. You are going to become the way that God has called you to be already because he has called you, worship leader, confident. He has called you secure. And most of all, he has called you his child. And you can never outrun Christ. You can never outlove and outrun God's love for you. If you join us weekly at our WTTU.co, our university, university program, we have these Bible studies that go on every Monday. We have these Thursday shows like Gary Durbin coming up on this Thursday, Kent Moore's webinar, other webinars that happen, other things to increase and to supply your needs as a worship team. I've heard a lot from you. Um, you guys have been emailing me, messaging me every day. How can I do this, Brandon? Um, how can I make that better? And you know, again, it's it, we're, we're all on a daily hunt, but I think that our daily hunt needs to be seeking God's wisdom, first and foremost. And so I pray that today's, out of the broadcast today, the questions that were asked, guys, thank you so much for your questions and comments. I'm praying that this will be a turnaround point for you, a turning point for you to be encouraged and to walk taller no matter what. Live by grace, grow by grace. Thank you so much, Christina, on that Facebook Live. I mean, that is what it's about, my friends. So be strong. Walk in the Lord Jesus. Hey, look, join us tomorrow with Kent Morris. It is going to be fantastic. Kent's going to be behind the board mixing and showing us dynamics, controls, and other things that we can do as audio tech leaders. It's going to be great. 12 p.m. tomorrow, go to wttu.co slash events and look at all of our events on the events page at wttu.co and join us. Check out our workshops and our mentoring at worshipteentraining.com and instead of going to a big conference, being crowded and fighting what you need to learn and what's relevant, what's not, who's teaching what, who's not teaching, how about one that comes to you? That's what we do. Friday and Saturday. We're going to be coming to Cincinnati, Ohio soon. We got New York back up on the map. We also have Georgia back on the map. Can't wait. So check everything out that we have for you, my friends, at worshipteentraining.com and also wttu.co. Thanks for joining us today. Come back next Tuesday with our next free live uh, show just like this, talking about worship and leading. We love you guys. Thanks so much for being here, and see you very soon. Bye.